The Black Suitcase Mystery. The first time I read the title of this book, I thought, this is a work of fiction. It turns out that it is a true story. It's a mystery story solved in part with the help of some fifth grade students. Oh, I just love this story. Gail Elliott Downs, you have written this book, A World War II Remembrance, and the black suitcase is with us today. I cannot believe this. I inherited the suitcase of letters. It was a, a way to keep the uh, treasures of a mother collect from her children. It started out with photographs. Uh, when her son George was eight years old, he uh, was sent to live with his grandparents because Hazel developed tuberculosis in 1930. Mm. Dad was a big band uh, musician and couldn't take care of the little boy. So he, George goes to New Hampshire he sees his mother again not until 1942, August. Uh, August of 42, he joins the Army Air Corps. So we've got childhood letters starting when he's eight, eight years old, and they go through the war years. He marries his childhood sweetheart, Wanda, so that is their wedding portrait. Um, tragically, he's killed on his 50th mission. If he had successfully uh, finished that, he would have come back to the States. So the uh, little suitcase, other than being a treasure chest of his uh, life is also a time capsule of his life, from, from his birth announcement to uh, the uh, final letter that Wanda writes in 1946 saying exactly where he's buried. So the suitcase gets closed in 1946. Uh, my great aunt died in 79. I had, took possession of the suitcase in 83, put it in my closet, didn't know what to do with it. Fast forward to 1991. I'm a first year school librarian in Brentwood, Missouri, a little small uh, community, and the fifth grade teacher wanted to get her kids going to genealogy. And I said, oh well, my. I've got this little suitcase of old letters. Maybe we could put together the story of these this family based on the letters. Uh, it's the students that named it. When I introduced the suitcase and told them what we were going to do, they said, oh, it's like a mystery. And we went on through then. Um, not only did we um, read the letters and find the story, uh, we were teaching, I was teaching in St. Louis, and in the suitcase is a newspaper clipping from uh, an episode with the plane. The pilot's from New York, but the co-pilot, according to this, was St. Louis. And I'm teaching in the St. Louis area, so we checked the phone book. The family was still there. The uh, wife said, come over, maybe I have something to help you with your, your project. And she gave me the exact same photograph except from a St. Louis newspaper rather than a New York newspaper. And she says, our second child is named after the pilot. Would you like his address? So before school ended that first year, our fifth graders wrote a letter to him asking all about George and the, uh, the episodes in uh, the war and how he was killed. And he responded. That was in May of 91. Uh, seven, uh, the 50th anniversary of Pearl Harbor was coming up December of uh, 91. And I pr uh, proposed to the principal and the fifth grade teacher to go on and do a, something to honor and commemorate the 50th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Um, our school superintendent was also a military uh, colonel. He'd been activated during Desert Storm. He supported the project. Uh, we had the pilot from the plane come from North Carolina. He joined us. After we came back from the holiday vacation, the kids said, do you suppose we can find Wanda? Wanda. Wanda. They wanted to find Wanda. Where's Wanda? That means they were so involved in this story, it yes. was really impersonal to them. They wanted to find they Wanda. What find happened her. to Wanda? We didn't know, except the, the last letter was 1946. Um, this is before our school had internet. This is 91. We don't get mm -hmm. any computer really until 96. No. The old fashioned way. Writing letters, you know, our clues were, you know, the addresses for in uh, West Virginia that she had. So we called, the, we wrote letters to those hometown chamber of commerces, history uh, societies, newspapers. We had the help of Ann Landers and her column. So uh, we found her, and she came. Uh, she had attended her high school 50th reunion. She came to our school on her 49th wedding anniversary. The week later, the bomb group was having a reunion in Milwaukee. We went up there. She was able to meet the pilot in person. She was able to meet the other comrades who were eyewitnesses to the plane being crashed. And they were able to find out. She was then able to find out, all those students, and, and she herself personally, what really happened. What really happened. Yeah. From the people who were there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
That was real closure and for the, her. It, it, it really helped her a lot, yeah. And then we spent two weeks uh, that summer in New Hampshire, going to all the places we had addresses for, you know, <laughs> reliving George's youth and his uh, childhood, all the things that my great aunt never, ex uh, never experienced. Uh, by this time, we've got a momentum going, and we went on to four years. Uh, we were commended by President Clinton in one of his Memorial Day speeches in Arlington. Um, a thrill of a lifetime. A 95 was the end of the commemoration for the 50th anniversary, and so the suitcase was kind of closed up. Um, I retired from uh, teaching in uh, Missouri, moved out to Depot Bay, Oregon. The book was published a year ago this summer, and I gave copies to the other crew members' descendants who knew, you know, wanted to share the story. And one got back with me and he said, um, Gail, you know, Polish researchers contacted me a few years ago. They had located the crash site. Oh. And he says, there's an Oregon connection. He gave me the name and picture of Gunther Vogel, who, a 16-year-old German soldier, anti-aircraft gun battery, one of those guns responsible for shooting down the plane. He lives in Bandon, Oregon, and I've met him. This is a, Astonishing. a photograph that's in the suitcase. This is a photograph in a museum in Poland. Same photograph. Evidently, one of the crew members must have had it. And there's a whole exhibit at the museum in Poland honoring those American uh, servicemen. And Gunther Vogel was part of the German military honor guard for those fallen American servicemen. He said they gave the military salute. They had a ceremony just as if it was one of their own uh, fallen comrades. So I don't want to give away the rest of the story here. I want people to read your book and experience what it was like for these students to every step of the yeah. way with you solve the mystery of mm -hmm. the black suitcase and then how so many others came forward with information oh, yes. and it snowballed from there and Wanda, what a wonderful way to have her come through life. He was the love of her mm -hmm. life. And to end it so well for herself. Yeah. Uh, with being buried next to him, yeah. love forever. Well, her, her, she had an opportunity to get the gravesite next to him. Uh, she believed that all these years he was buried in Belgium. He was really yes. brought back to New Hampshire. Uh, she was given the gravesite next to him and her tombstone when we visited in uh, summer of 92, separate, separated by war, reunited by death. And she rests next to him now. So. The Black Suitcase Mystery, A World War II Remembrance. What a remarkable story that ties the stories of the past to today's generation, and they may pass that on. To I their so. children. Oh, I, one of the little girls that's quoted in there at the beginning, she said, it's like we're living a social studies lesson. And last uh, uh, summer she posted on Facebook, she said, I was one of those first fifth grade, she said, it's been the best thing we ever did in school and I wanted my children to know about it. She says, I googled uh, Black Suitcase and by golly there's a book out of it. And she says, I bought the book and my children know what I did 25 years ago. That little girl is now 35 years old with her own family but they're remembering the story. And I believe lots and lots of those other students that went through that had the same feelings. I'm so glad that you chose to give that project to them to solve. Oh, it's, <laughs> it was a joy for all of us. I'm certain <laughs> it was. Well, thank you. Thank you, jo uh, Gail Elliott Downs, and read her book, The Black Suitcase Mystery, A World War II Remembrance. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. I and thank you for here. bringing the actual well, Black suitcase. We're still journeying through life here, the suitcase <laughs> and I. <laughs>